So we're going to start off today by generating some random numbers using a random number generator. So I'm going to create a variable into and use the function normran to create a series of random numbers. So the first argument that normran takes is my mean value. So say I want that to be 5. And then the second argument it takes is the deviation. So let's make that one. And then the third argument you can give is the size of the array. So let's make it a one by 1,000 array. And then we're going to use that to generate our random number. I'll just run it and make sure everything goes okay. Oh, got to save it. Okay, so now we have a 1 by 1,000 array of random numbers, and we can open this up in the workspace and see that we have a bunch of random numbers kind of surrounding the number 5. Most of them are within a deviation of 1. Okay, cool. So what can we do with this? So let's fit a histogram to this. So I'm going to use the function histogram. We'll, we'll create a new figure and use the function histogram to fit a histogram to N2 and run that and see what that looks like. There we go. There's our histogram. Okay, cool. So we have a histogram um, and these are showing the different frequency that's popping up in our random numbers. So you can see that around five we have more um, values. So on the y-axis we're getting the frequency here. And on the x-axis, we're getting um, the x-axis is essentially the values that we're taking the frequency of. So if I put it in a title for this um, on the y-axis, so y label, let's see, so frequency. Um, and then the x-axis it doesn't really have a meaning here, so let's make maybe make it um, something like number of miles walked. So say we have a bunch of people and we're looking at how many miles they walked in a particular day. So now <clears throat> we see our um, axis labels and we can see our distribution. So if we want to... <coughs> We use normrand, um, which is a random number generator that's going to use a normal distribution. So if we want to fit a his, fit a curve to this histogram, what we can do is instead of using histogram, we can use the function histfit. So let's do that now. So let me use histfit into, and it's going to default to um, a normal distribution. Let's just see what that looks like. Bloop. Okay, awesome. So now we have a curve that's associated with our values um, that we plotted earlier. So now we can use that curve to talk about the probability distribution and we can make claims about how the data follows a normal distribution. I mean, it's kind of expected because we use the normal distribution to generate our random data, but if we're looking at like something like heights, like um, different people's heights in the United States maybe, we could fit a um, normal distribution to that sort of function. So similarly, we don't just have to create histograms using the um, normal using a normal distribution so we can actually create histograms that model other types of distribution so another example could be a beta distribution so let's create another variable m2 or let's do b2 because we're doing a beta distribution so we can generate some random numbers using a beta distribution using a really similar function to the one we used earlier so we can now use beta rnd um, it's got a very similar format, so let's do 10, um, 10, no, 10, 1, and 1, 1,000. So similarly, 
The first two numbers are going to give you coefficients for your beta random distribution, and then um, the elements in this vector here are going to tell MATLAB how many elements you want to create. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so now you have B2 up here as well as N2. So now we have all of these different um, data points here going from one or 0 to 1. They're kind of centering around 1, though. All right, so let's plot these. Um, so what we can do to plot these is use histfit um, B2, and then we can specify the distribution after we specify the bin number. So let's make there, so in bins, that argument there is telling MATLAB how many bins we want, and the bins are essentially the groupings that we saw in these histograms. So if I pull up one of these, so we have bins, several bins between each whole number, so it looks like there's five bins. So it's grouping every 0.2 values, it seems like. So let's, let's do this, um, uh, maybe make five bins and then we can specify the distribution we want and for this we can put in beta see if this comes up with something ah here we are so you can see here we're getting kind of a, a tail out from our curve so this is a beta distribution I think it makes a little bit more sense um, let's make another B2. So let's do B3, um, beta, RND, and then I can give more of a physical example for this that makes a little bit more sense than the one I just showed. Okay, just fit B3, 5, beta. All right, I guess we probably want a new figure. Aha, cool. So now we have going out here, values moving from zero to essentially 0.5. I mean, they could go as far up to um, one. So values will always be between zero and one here. And we get a tailed curve going in this direction. So just based on this graph, it seems like we're losing a lot of the data um, because of the bin number. So let's try a different bin number. We'll plot B3 again and do a bin of 10. Um, beta. Ah, yeah, that looks a little bit better. Okay, cool. So looking at these values, um, what a beta function can describe in real life is something like, say, if we are taking an exam and um, there is a minimum time that people are taking, essentially spending on the exam, and then we kind of have a tailed distribution out towards the end. So it's not really a normal distribution, it could be a tailed distribution, so time um, it takes to complete a task usually follows a beta curve. Oh, sorry. Go away. Um, usually follows a beta curve. Um, so that's one like real life example we might use this in. Okay, so let's do just one more beta function to illustrate this. So let's do B4. Have our first shape parameter be 2 maybe, and then the second one be 5. And then we'll have again an array of 1 to 1000. Um, and do his fit B4, and we'll, we'll start with a bin of 10, and then specify the beta function. See what that looks like. Oops. Got an error. Um, oops, gotta generate my random numbers. So beta rand, um, okay, and then we'll fit that. So let's see what that looks like. 
Ah, it's a little bit nicer, so you can see the shape of the curve a little bit better now. Um, and you can actually see that it does go from 0 to 1. So depending on what you choose for your first two arguments, your shape parameters and your beta random function, it'll change essentially the shape of your curve. You have a lot of plots open. Um, yeah, so that's how you can use the random number generator to create normal distributions and beta distributions. There are a lot of all, um, other ways to generate random numbers to follow different types of distributions. So if you're going to be using one of the other distribution types, then you can just look up how to generate those random numbers. And similarly, you can go into hisfit, just like we did. Um, and then if B4 is not going to follow these, but um, you can say like kernel is another option. Let's just try this. I don't think the fit will be great, but we'll, we'll just look at it. Okay, yeah, that's not beautiful, but whatever. So if you actually add data that fit the kernel distribution, and then there's a, a bunch of other types of distributions that you could look at. Um, we're not going to go into all of those, but if you're taking a lot of statistics courses, it could be useful to use this type of function.